is considered to be very auspicious for Buddhists, mainly because uh, this is the same month in which three auspicious uh, events had occurred uh, more than 2,600 years ago. Uh, formerly, Lord Buddha was born. It is his birthday on the 15th of this lunar calendar. And then on the same day, on the 15th of the lunar calendar of the fourth month, Sagadawa, he also achieved enlightenment. And on the same day, he also passed into Nirvana, Mahapari Nirvana. Yeah, he passed away. So basically, it has three auspicious events in just one month and also in just one day. It will come on the 15th day. Today is the fourth day, uh, first day. So we, as Buddhists, uh, we not only believe, but we have been taught by the Buddha himself to try to accumulate as much merit as possible and also to abstain from committing unwholesome deeds because they multiply greatly. Uh, roughly, we talk about the multipl multiplication of uh, 100,000 falls, yeah? 100,000 times. For example, if you chant one Om Mani Padme Hum Mantra, it will uh, multiply 100,000 times. If you do one prostration, it is equal to doing 100,000 prostrations. In the same way, if you eat the flesh of one animal, if you contribute it to the butchering of one animal by eating its flesh directly or indirectly, you, it is also equivalent to 100,000 animals. If you steal something, if you lie, you know, if you engage in any unwholesome deed, they will also multiply. So this month, especially we try to observe our body, speech and mind, and uh, we try to abstain from uh, harming the environment, harming animals and harming our fellow human beings. So it's a very peaceful month for us Buddhists. And that is why I thought that, you know, during the, for the duration of this month, every day for one hour, I would like to do I would like to teach something special, which is the patience chapter from a great um, pandita, a great scholar, a great yogi uh, from Nalanda University, yeah, from ancient India. His name was Shanti Deva. I don't remember exactly which year because I'm not very good with numbers, but I think it's either in the eighth century or the twelfth century. We have to look it up. Yeah, don't take my word for it. Um, I don't remember dates very well. I'm better with languages than dates. So he composed this very beautiful and poetic uh, teaching called Bodhicharyavatara. Yeah, Bodhisattva Charyavatara. The short form is Bodhicharyavatara. Uh, it is basically the conduct of a Bodhisattva. A conduct, the perfect conduct of someone who is on the path towards complete Buddhahood. How proper Buddhist should behave in order to achieve perfect enlightenment. Yeah, So he, it has 10 chapters and the chapter that I'm teaching is the chapter of patience. So, and why patience? Because there's also a chapter on wisdom, on meditation, generosity, on discipline, so many other uh, uh, parameters, you know, other, other subjects. Why did I choose patience? Because most of the queries that I get, most of the questions that I get from people on Instagram and also on uh, in, in real real life, most of the problems are associated with anger and the inability to practice patience. So I think it's also because our modern age is very fast, it's very instant. Uh, well, we haven't been able to travel uh, because of the lockdown of the coronavirus, but you can just catch a plane. And the next day, you can reach uh, the other side of the world. You know, it will take 15 hours, maybe 14, 15, 16 hours, and uh, you can reach the other side of the world. It's that fast. And because of this instantaneous traveling, instantaneous, instant accumulation of wealth, instant accumulation of so many things, we have lots of conflicts, you know, different people uh, visiting different places, us getting exposed to different cultures, then it creates conflict within ourselves, within our mind. The external conflict directly affects our internal conflict, yeah? Uh, directly af affects our mind and, and causes internal conflict. So that's why many people these days have very little patience. Um, we don't have the capacity to be understanding, to be compassionate and to be loved. And before trying to be compassionate before trying to love others, I believe that it's important, it's imperative 
absolutely essential to be patient first because if you can't sit still you, if your mind can't sit still then there's no space for compassion there is no space for loving kindness so that is why i decided to teach it, to teach the patience chapter of shanti devas bodhicharya avatara so the first stanza what i will do is like i will there are roughly 130 something stanzas in that chapter i divided that into uh, 30 days with the help of a calculator I'm not good with numbers at all. I don't like numbers. Uh, nothing against them personally. <laughs> Just don't like them, you know. So um, yeah. So I, I thought like four stanzas per day would be good. And basically, the stanzas uh, will be in uh, Buddhist form uh, in, in in Tibetan uh, script, which I will upload every day. Four stanzas per day onto my Instagram page one day prior, so you you can have uh, you have some time to. go over it and to understand what i will be you know uh, to prepare yourself for roughly what we'll be uh, discussing the next day so the first stanza is a warning from shanti deva he is trying to warn us he is trying to scare us into practicing patience he is using scaring tactics yeah which is quite effective actually he is saying anger destroys all the good conduct Mm. such as generosity and worshiping the sugatas sugata is an epithet of a buddha it means well gone one devarshipa yeah beautifully gone one well gone one how did he go did he went well or did he did he have trouble no 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 he went very well both in hindi you know achhi tarah se kiya well gone one devarshipa happily gone one yeah happily gone one well gone one that's sugata there's also tishinshipa thus gone one he went like that these epithets we use for the buddha and they have profound meanings i will not go very deep into the meaning of each epithet but anyway it is referencing lord buddha yeah so anger destroys when you have a flash flash of anger it destroys good karma good conduct good energy that we have accumulated from generosity and from worshiping buddhas or uh, you know uh, they accumulate a lot of merit because buddhas and bodhisattvas higher beings higher enlightened beings they are they are a great field to accumulate uh, good karma it is like planting a seed when you plant a seed in a barren land without much uh, you know which is not very fertile which doesn't have very good uh, you know sunlight or water access you won't get very good uh, uh, benefit you know but if you plant if you plant your seed in a very fertile land with good sunlight with with uh, sufficient water even without you know too much exertion you will have good results so buddhas and bodhisattvas worshiping them making offerings to them praying to them we as buddhist we believe that you accumulate a lot of good merit they are perfect field of accumulation of merit okay which has been acquired over thousands of eons so good conduct good karma that we have accumulated through various good deeds such as generosity yeah who doesn't like to be generous yeah who doesn't uh, like to be Uh, helped you know everybody likes to be helped They're emotionally financially materially every every way so generosity accumulates a lot of good merit worshiping the sugatas uh, making offerings to the buddhas and bodhisattvas like we accumulate a lot of good merit as well as other good conducts for example discipline etc yeah so um which have been acquired over thousands of years so if you if you're angry even for a even for a second it can destroy many it can destroy a lot of good karma accumulated throughout thousands of eons in buddhism an eon there are a lot of different uh, theories about the duration of an eon uh, an eon the longevity of an eon some say like millions of years some say billions of years again i don't really care because well it's just basically a very long time so a lot of good karma that we have accumulated um will will be destroyed with one instant of anger uh that's basically what we need to remember but also we have to remember but that we talk about good karma which we have accumulated which we have not dedicated towards other sentient beings karma that we have dedicated towards other sentient beings uh will never be uh demolished will never be extinguished you know will never be destroyed but we're talking about karma which has been left 
undedicated those hunting beings those are like for, for for instance if you were to go outside of your house and if you leave your windows and doors open uh then you're inviting trouble you know so when you come back the thief anger is like a thief it will come inside your house and it will steal your uh, good karma which you have not you know dedicated but if you dedicate your karma if you dedicate your good karma good energy to those all sentient beings it's like shutting your doors shutting your windows so then the thieves cannot come in hmm. so the second one uh it's quite they're quite self-explanatory you know especially in english because shantideva his language is very simple unlike the other panditas you know they're like they, they are very difficult to understand and you need a lot of commentaries shantideva's proses his stanzas are quite easy to understand and they're very poetic there is no vice like hatred hmm. there is no bad karma there is no bad energy there's no vice oh something bad that you can do like hatred why because hatred as mentioned in the previous uh stanza it destroys the accumulation of thousands of eons worth of good karma so it harms you also it harms others because you incite anger you incite anger you cause conflicts you know you damage someone you you harm someone or something so for example jealousy just the mere feeling of jealousy is also very bad but it doesn't necessarily harm others in the same way that anger does hatred does yeah so there is no vice like hatred and there is no austerity like patience mm, patience everybody likes a patient person yeah i used to be quite angry when i was young nobody used to like me that much you know i used to be quite short tempered now due to the you know uh blessings of my gurus and to the uh some meditations that i do some studies that i've done i become slightly more patient so i'm getting more friends now so there is no austerity like patience there is no good deed like patience therefore one should earnestly cultivate patience in various ways we should try our best to be patient whether it's to get up and just leave you know when you are starting to have a um argument you have to suppress your ego so you don't respond in a harsh method to someone which which makes the situation worse so just employ whatever method you can but be patient hmm and the third stanza the mind does not find peace hmm? obviously when you're angry your mind you cannot meditate there's no peace in your mind you burning inside you feel this physical sensation of burning even though you know that you haven't drank uh you know fuel and you haven't lit yourself internally but you can feel this heat inside you and that does not allow you your mind to be peaceful mind does not find peace nor does it enjoy pleasure and joy hmm. physical pleasure uh mental pleasure yeah or joy you can't you go to a picnic if you're angry you can't you know you try to watch a movie you listen try to listen to some songs but if you're angry you really can't maybe there are some movies and some songs especially songs which can soothe you but generally speaking you will not find much pleasure and joy nor does it find sleep or fortitude when the thorn of hatred dwells in the heart these are so such beautiful words you know you can't sleep when you're angry your ears are red your cheeks are red yeah your nostrils are flaring like bull you know <laughs> yeah your face contorts into such i don't know demonic you know looks <laughs> um you can't sleep you can't rest you know and um as long as this thorn of hatred is in your mind you will not be happy hmm? the fourth stanza it is an example even dependents who mourn rewards with wealth and honors wishes wish to harm the master who is repugnant due to his anger so for example if you have a master and a master has servants the master is generally a very angry person yeah uh, not not a very nice person a very unpleasant angry person but he is a little bit generous with his words with his uh, with his wealth so he uh, he you know he gives money he you know he is he's quite generous with money and with with the with wealth but and also with his praise he speaks nicely to his to his followers but he is generally an angry person he's not a nice person you know so then even if you treat your own servants even if there was a master who treats his servants with wealth and praise and and you know honor um 
that those that master is not free from harm from his own servants yeah uh, so there are lots of examples you know you hear in the news sometimes like oh this person especially uh, i was reading news you know sometimes in the big cities like uh, yeah so this person got murdered in his sleep uh, these owners got murdered in their sleep because uh, the servants or were angry you know even though the masters were very generous the servants were angry and they were not happy so they uh, murdered the, you know uh, the, the the masters so nobody likes an angry person basically in the first four stanzas which are quite easy to understand Shantide was saying it destroys eons and eons worth of your good karma mm, it uh, doesn't allow you to dwell uh, you know uh, in happiness in peace uh, it harms others as well as yourself and even if you give money and praise and honor to someone nobody likes an angry person yeah so it's quite disadvantages uh, afterwards from tomorrow onwards slowly uh, we will be going deeper and deeper into the practice of actual patience uh, but that will come that will come slowly so uh, that's that's the kind of format that i will follow every day you know i will upload i've already uploaded tomorrow's four stanzas which you have time to reflect on today uh, and uh, yeah so i will speak a little bit in nadaki and a little bit in english and then now we will do some prayers uh, we will do some prayers which I've already uploaded. I requested everyone to uh, copy the prayers which I which are on my post. I don't I chose to sit in Jew. Then you chose to get the name. This is a new upload to the youth. Is up 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 to the youth. to the please open the, uh, the main teaching. But first we will start with refuge. So open refuge first. My name is Refuge first. And then we will do the praise uh, to, to Buddha mm. and then afterwards uh, depending on the time we'll do some meditation <clears throat> so fold your hands your your hands like this uh, imagine like you're holding a precious jewel Shantime Jet 
La Jawadam 